welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original air date is March 24th, 1951, and the title is The Devil's Drum. Thanks for listening, and let's get into it. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? This one, The Devil's Drum. In our part of the West, a man can get into the strangest complications just by taking a shortcut through the hills instead of going the long way around. Like the time California and I were on our way into the little cow town of Saguaro, not far from the Mexican border. Uh, Hoppy, are you plumb certain this mule track's going to get us to Saguaro? Sure, unless they moved the town since I was here last. That's the drumming mountain on our right. We should be there in another half hour. I don't know if I can hold out that long. All I had for breakfast was a view of the sunrise. <laughs> California, I told you not to wolf down all your grub last night. Wait a minute. Hey, that's funny. What is? That old weather-beaten cabin back there among the trees. Nobody's lived in it for years, but there's smoke coming out of the chimney. There is. You sure get sharp eyes. Maybe we'll get you something to fill that empty spot after all. Let's go. I smell something cooking. I hope it's a nice, juicy, two-inch steer steak. (laughs) Oh, that's strange. Anybody here? Food on the table. It's still warm. Food? Uh, what is it, Hoppy? A steak? Uh, doggone. Beans. Yeah, somebody just sitting down to eat. Hello there. Kind of eerie, ain't it? Like it was uh, haunted. <laughs> Never heard of a ghost eating beans. Well, in a case of emergency, I eat them. California, that food doesn't belong to you. Oh, no, Hoppy, just one little taste won't hurt nobody. And... Now, I wouldn't do that <laughs> if I... <laughs> Whoa! What's the matter? I'm burning up. I'm... <laughs> Somebody spilled a whole box of pepper in that stuff. <laughs> That's one time you got exactly what you deserve. <laughs> Some bushwhacker must have been laying for me. Oh, you two, put him up in there. Uh, huh? I'll take what? that six gun, mister. Yours, too. Now, where are they? Uh, well, well, where's who? I'm afraid we don't know what you're talking about. No? Then what are you doing out here ten miles off of the main road? Well, we just, uh, uh thought we... Now, don't you try to die dry deal me, mister. I give you exactly ten seconds to talk or the West is going to be shy two cowpokes. One, two, three... <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Devil's Drum. While taking a shortcut through the hills, Hoppy and California ran across a mysteriously empty cabin with a hot meal still on the table. Next, an armed stranger appeared in the doorway and is threatening to shoot if they don't give him some information which they don't possess. Six, seven... 
Eight. If you stop playing with that trigger, we'll tell you all we know. Yeah, anything. All right, let's have it. I'm Hopalong Casty, and this is my sidekick, California Carlson. We're on our way into Sawara from the Bar 20. We cut across this way to save a little time. Mm-hmm. We came in here to see if we could buy some grub. The door was ajar, but there was no one around. Yeah? How about that food on the table? It's a mystery to us. Well, I guess if you knew anything, you wouldn't have let me catch you with your guns, Holstered. Who's that coming up the trail? Nobody we know. But you can see him through the window. Huh? Oh! Oh, it's the sheriff and Chappy Doon. Uh, here, uh, uh, take back your guns. Thanks. Ah, that's a relief. I never did admire the view down the inside of a gun barrel. Too dark and dismal. <clears throat> Howdy, Sheriff. Well, who are these men, Grinnell? A couple of strangers on the way to town. This here's Cassidy and that's Carlson. What brings you out here, Sheriff? I'm looking for Jose Moreno. Isn't this his cabin? Well, he's been using it to bunk in. I checked around and back, Sheriff. Nobody there. All right, Chappie. Now, anybody seen Moreno? Not me. Uh, what do you want him for? A little gunplay down at the Sawara Hotel where Jose works. A man got killed, that's all. Shot in the back. Another Mexican named Calderon. Was that uh, Louis Calderon? Yeah. How did you know, Cassidy? Well, if I've heard right, he is one of the meanest gunslingers in Mexico. Yeah? Well, have you heard so much... Maybe you heard where Jose Morena is. I'm afraid I can't help you there. How about you, Carlson? Shucks, I don't know nothing. Did somebody see Moreno shoot Calderon? No, but he made a little mistake. He let Calderon live long enough to write a note telling who did it. Mind letting me see the note? I guess not, if you handle it careful. This is the evidence that's going to hang a man. Hmm. Jose que trabaja en el postado es... El Capulo. Yeah. That means Jose, who works in the hotel, is the guilty one. Uh-huh. You know Spanish? No, I looked it up in the dictionary. Hey, Sheriff, this stove is still hot. That's so. Who's been doing the cooking? Oh, well, why, uh, Cassidy and Carlson was hungry. They, uh, stopped in for a meal. I see. Uh, see. Uh, uh if, if you don't mind, Sheriff California and I will be on our way. All right, go ahead. Chappie, you and me will wait here for Moreno. He'll be back. He don't know yet that we got him in our sights. Sure, be like shooting a tin can off of a pole. Yeah. Grinnell, why don't you stick around with us and see what we do to fancy gun toters from over the border? Well, uh, oh, all right, Sheriff. Come on, California. Hoppy, uh, why did Grinnell lie to the sheriff about me and you cooking them beans? I'm not sure. But Grinnell must know something the sheriff doesn't. I think he wanted to give Jose time to get away. Did you notice something strange about that death note? No, or what? Jose que trabaja en el posada. It should have been en la posada. He used the masculine article with a feminine noun. Oh, that's bad. When you get the masculine mixed up with the feminine noun. <laughs> yeah, and in this case, it's unbelievable. Uh, uh? No Mexican would write a thing like that, even if he was dying. California, that note is a forgery. Yeah? Uh, hey, uh, Hoppy, what in the dog bones are we turning off here? We're going to circle around behind the cabin and try to pick up the trail of this Jose fella. There are a lot of questions I'd like to ask him. <laughs> to leave the horses here. He went right up Drumming Mountain. See where the pebbles slid down? Yeah, sure do. Hmm. That's a funny name for a mountain, Hobby. Uh, what do they call it that for? You see that rock formation up on the second ridge? No, not there. Look up higher. Uh, yeah? That big round rock on the crest. They call it the Devil's Drum. It ain't shaped like a drum. No, but the way it's balanced up there, they say that when the wind is just right, that rock tips back and forth on its foundations and makes a drumming noise you can hear all over the valley. Mm. An old superstition around here. That when you hear the Devil's Drum beating, a brave man is going to die. That wouldn't worry me, none. 
I ain't brave enough. <laughs> Down, California. Oh, looks like we found our man. He ain't very friendly, like. That was a rifle shot. We're still out of revolver range. Stick something up and draw his fire, and I'll try to spot his location. All right, Hoppy. He's up in that patch of jack pines right under the devil's drum. I'll work up behind him through this dry wash while you keep him busy by moving around to the right. All right, Hoppy. But be real careful, unless your insurance is made out to me. Drop that rifle, son, and you won't get hurt. What? All right, California, come on up. Now, let's take a look at you. Well, what are you... Who are you? No, speak English. Como se llama usted, por favor? Oh, don't tell me you don't speak Spanish either. Boy, shucks, Hoppy, he, he ain't nothing but a boy. Take another look and don't let the clothes fool you. Well, saddle me up and ride me to Frisco if it ain't a pretty little senorita. Uh... Buenos dias, uh, Madame uh, Azele. I don't think she's talking to us. She was doing plenty of talking with that Winchester. Look at the hole in my favorite sombrero. Uh-huh. Well, I guess we might as well be going. We made a mistake. Uh-huh. Uh, ain't you going to find out who she is? What difference does it make? By this time, Jose Moreno is probably in the hands of the sheriff for killing Louis Calderon. Oh, no. Oh, my poor Jose. What will they do to him? No speak English, huh? Oh, please, senor, did... Did Jose really kill Senor Calderon? The sheriff thinks so. He said it was Jose who shot Calderon in the back. But Jose would not shoot in the back. Calderon was our enemy. But Jose is a verdadero vaquero. Oh, he is not a uh, bushwhacker. That's what I thought. And I believe we can help you prove he's innocent. Oh, gracias, senor. Uh, uh, Cassidy. Cassidy, I have promised Jose I would talk to no one... But I think I trust you. Good. You're Jose's wife? See, si. I'm Linda Morena. I wear these clothes to hide from Senor Calderon, who wants to take me back to Mexico and claim the reward. Oh, you mean you're a fugitive from justice, ma'am? Oh, no. But my father is a big man in our country, and Jose is only a poor vaquero. When I have run away with Jose, my father offered 12,000 pesos reward to bring me back. Well, I'll be barbecued. Louis Calderon has followed us across the border. He was one who would sell his own grandmother for 12,000 pesos. Uh, a lot of men would. That's 5,000 American dollars, California. Hey, Hoppy, look down there. Somebody in the trail, heading for the cabin. Oh, see? He, this Jose. Oh, quick, let us go down to meet him. I'm afraid we'll be too late. Yeah, the sheriff and his deputies laying for him at the cabin. The way they talked, they was going to shoot first and arrest him afterwards. Oh, terrible. Oh, Jose, go back. I can't hear you, ma'am. He's even out of rifle range. He's riding right into a trap, and there's not one thing we can do to save him. Ah, uh, poor valiente, carido. Hoppy! What is it? It's the devil's drum. Jose, stop. He's looking up. Quick, Linda, wave to him. Uh, That's right, wave him back uh, from the cabin. See? Oh, I hope he... Oh. Oh. Too late. Back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Devil's Drum. High up on the drumming mountain, Hopalong, California, and Linda Morena watched helplessly while in the valley below, Linda's young husband rode into the sheriff's ambush to be shot down for a murder he didn't commit. Now the three are on their way down the mountainside. That rifle must be heavy for you, senora. Can't I carry it? No. Oh, we may meet my husband's murderer. Oh, now, ma'am, you don't want to go making things any worse. Listen. Somebody found our horses. Can you see who it is? Yeah, it's the Henri old galoot that held us up in the cabin. Linda, where are you going? Don't try to stop me. If Jose is dead, don't you think I care who else dies? No, Linda, don't. Linda, is that you? Oh, Uncle Charlie. Oh, Uncle Charlie. 
Charlie, did you see what they did to Jose? Yes, honey, but he ain't hurt much. It weren't nothing but a little scratch. Oh, I can't believe it. Well, they patched him up and took him down to the oh. Sawara jail. Well, show me for a plug of tobacco. Is this fellow really your uncle, ma'am? <laughs> no, he's not my real uncle, but I have known him since I was a child. He used to visit my father in Mexico. That's right, sure did. Linda was the prettiest little machachi you ever saw. He was Uncle Charlie who suggests I stay in the cabin where I would not be seen. I figured it weren't safe for him at my ranch, because anybody that come looking for the reward might have heard we was old friends and start coyoting around. I hate to break up this reunion, but Jose is still facing a murder charge. Yeah, sure is a shame he had to plug that no-good cauldron and get in all this oh, trouble. But Charlie, he did not do it. Huh? No, I think I can prove that death note wasn't written by Calderon or any other Mexican. The killer must have gotten the words out of an English-Spanish dictionary. But he didn't quite know how to use them. I see. Brunel, how about you taking care of Linda while California and I ride into the sheriff's office and get a few things straightened out? Sure. Uh, we'll ride out to my ranch, child. I guess you'll be safe enough in that get-up. <laughs> Leastways, if nobody sees you. <laughs> see you, Uncle Charlie. I uh, will see you later. I hope we'll have some good news. Come on, California. Kind of funny about Jose being out of the hoose cow already, uh, ain't it, Hoppy? Uh-huh. Fellas said he talked the sheriff uh, into taking him out to inspect some evidence. Must have done some fancy talking, or that sheriff, some mule-headed man. Well, maybe we'll find out now. Here's the sheriff's office. But that ain't the sheriff with his boots on the sheriff's desk and his nose in the sheriff's bottle. No, it's Chappy Doon, the deputy. Hello, Doon. Where's the sheriff? I'm in charge when the sheriff's away. What can I do for you, Cassidy? Have a little spot? No, thanks. I do my drinking out of a spring. Doon, do you know anything about the Spanish language? Only what I read in my dictionary. <laughs> well, if you did, you'd know that Calderon's note was forged by an American. Oh, yeah? Now, why didn't the sheriff think to investigate that note some more? That was downright neglectful of him. Perhaps, but now that we, uh... You know something? There are plenty of voters in this county don't think our sheriff is the smartest man they could find for the job. Well, I wouldn't know about that. But, Mr. Doom, there's something else you and the sheriff should know. Jose has a wife hiding out near town. Her father offered a 12,000 peso reward for her return to his rancho. Yeah? Calderon came up here to kidnap Linda and claim the reward. Whoever killed him must have been after the reward, too. So he put Calderon out of the way and tried to saddle Jose with the murder. So he'd be sitting in jail while the killer took his wife back to Mexico. Uh-huh. Now, it's up to you and the sheriff to find out who fits into that picture. It's got to be someone who knew about the reward. When you find him, you will have your killer. Now, listen, Cassidy. What call you got to come nosing in out of nowhere and tell the sheriff's office what our duty is and what it ain't? Chappy, somebody in this town shot one man in the back and tried to get another man hung for it. Whether you like it or not, that's anybody's business. Cassidy, I wouldn't want to have you for an enemy... Heard tell you can unholster a gun like scared lightning. Whoever told you that wasn't prevaricating, son. I think I'm coming over to your side. Just what do you mean? Well, I've been covering up for this sheriff. I was scared to say anything. He's a fast-drawn man. Besides, I kind of like my job. You'd better talk now and fast. Well, it was the sheriff that plugged Calderon and wrote that fake note so he could arrest Jose Morena. He must have heard about the reward, like you said. The sheriff? Then what for did he let Jose out of the jail? Well, so he'd have an excuse to drop him for for trying to escape. Why, the dirty side wonder. Yeah, if that's the way things are, we'd better get going, California. Better move fast. You want to save that young lady from a trip back to Mexico. Uncle Charlie's ran? Yeah, and I hope we get there in time. Uh, wouldn't that scorch you if the sheriff was already in his way to Mexico with that poor little gal? I'm still not sure what to expect. I don't trust Chappy Doon any more than I would a rattlesnake. Oh, uh, you think he told us a barrel full of lies? He's been double-dealing the man he works with every way he can think of. A man like that'll double-deal anybody. Then what for are we starting out in this maverick chase? We don't dare take a chance. Just this once, Chappy Doon may be telling the truth. Hey, 
Puffy, what's that team and wagon doing out in front of Grinnell's ranch house? I don't know. I don't see any sign of the sheriff. Better draw your gun, California. Grinnell, we're coming in. Nobody at home. We'll see. Quite some library of books the old Billy collected. Yeah, it is. Well, I guess there's no... Uh... Who's that in the floor? Grinnell. Is he dead? Wait a minute. No, he's just unconscious. There's no wound. Somebody must have gun-butted him. What's you doing? Checking to see if his gun was fired. It wasn't. <coughs> he's coming too, Hoppy. Uh-huh. <coughs> Who hit me? Was it to the sheriff? <coughs> oh, Carlson and Cassidy. I, I remember now. Help me up. we got to stop him. Grinnell, where's Linda? They, they grabbed her. And then they knocked me out with a gun butt. Hurry. They're, they're taking her back for the reward. Hey, they're, they're gone. They, they got clean away. Who did? Who's they? The, the, the sheriff and Chappie Doon. Chappie Doon? Why, he couldn't have... <clears throat> uh, well, uh, we ain't got time to argue. Hoppy, for the love of all and doggies, get on your horse. They might be halfway to Mexico by now. I don't think we'll have to look that far. Uh, huh? Take a look under that wagon cover. Why, sure, Hoppy. Linda. Oh, why, you poor little kid, all trussed up like a Kansas City fowl. California, watch out for... Now, you two nosy he-hands up in there. Come on, way up. Uh, Why, Uncle Charlie. California, you're looking at a man who'd sell his own grandmother for $5,000. Hmm, you're pretty cool, Cassidy. Why don't you go for your gun? You're so fast on the draw. Oh, Hoppy, did you know about... Yeah, the... I should have known much sooner. Remember when I told Chappie to look for a man who knew about the reward? That started me thinking. The only people besides us who knew about it up to then were Jose and Linda and Uncle Charlie Grinnell. No, why didn't I think of that? But it was your library that convinced me, Grinnell. Yeah? Dust on every book a quarter of an inch thick, all except one. An English-Spanish dictionary. The one you used when you forged that death note from Calderon. Yeah, that's right. But this time I won't bother with death notes from Cassidy and Carlson. Because after I collect the reward, I ain't coming back to this flea-bitten cow town. California, take your knife and cut Linda's rope. For sure. Hold it, Carlson. I want her the way she is for the trip. Go ahead, California. Cut her loose and take off that gag. Uh, uh, all right, Hoppy. Oh, no. Oh, God. All right, if you want it so bad. Hey, 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 what's wrong with it? I took your cartridges out while you were playing possum on the floor, Grinnell. I was afraid somebody might get hurt. Oh, good old Hoppy. I thought for a minute that... that all that right, we... start thinking all over again. This one's got plenty of cartridges in it. <laughs> you didn't look for his shoulder holster, did you, Cassidy? <laughs> you ain't as old and as smart as I am. And the way things are, you ain't got any time left to learn. No, don't do it. Oh, oh, oh my fingers! Nice shooting, son. Right out of his hand. Buenos dias, señor. Oh. Linda. Oh, oh, are you all right, my precious little turtle dog? Oh, see, Jose. Oh, my brave, handsome caballero. Oh, oh my aching lumbago. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. What's the matter, California? Uh, I'm just starting to breathe again. I was all set for the six foot under. <laughs> that was a little close for comfort. Hoppy, uh, how did you know uh, Jose would show up when he did? Well, assuming that Chappie wasn't telling the truth, which he wasn't, we knew the sheriff took Jose out of the jail to look at some evidence, which can only have been that message in Spanish. 
I knew that once Jose took a look at it, he could prove to the sheriff that it was a forgery. Yeah, but... And uh... once the sheriff turned him loose, where else would he go but looking for his wife? Yeah, I see. Uh, speaking of Chappie Doon, uh, why in tarnation did he fill his fool of that flapping cackle about the sheriff? Chappie's an ambitious man, California. Not knowing my habits very well, he expected me to go out on the prod for the sheriff. And I guess he thought I could outdraw and outshoot him. <laughs> you could. Too. After that, Chappie's going to be the new sheriff of Sawara County. Ambition is all right in its way, but it can get out of hand and cause a lot of confusion. Listen, the devil's drum. Uh-oh. A brave man's gonna die. Let's get out of here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> getting conceited, old pal. Uh, worrying about you, old fellow. <laughs> well, let's go then. Thus, Hoppy and California bring us to the end of another exciting adventure. So be sure to be with us for the next episode of Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.